Hello again, my friends. Today we are going to be learning about how to wire up some. So wake up and learn something today. <laughs> so this here is a little air horn that I am using just because I don't want to completely annihilate your hearing. And I have some relays which I want to explain to you about, a pre-wired relay socket. And I'm also going to let you know in advance that if you are wiring this into your vehicle, I can give you a pre-wired cheat sheet that will tell you the horn location, wire, color, and its functionality in your car so that we can use that in conjunction with the supplied relay, which I presume you should be using a relay with your kit. If you bought a good kit, it came with a relay to wire it up to energize it to a high current output to connect to your air horns. So that's important. So if you want one of those, I'll put a link below for you guys to shoot me an email and you all can get the free information because I want to give it to you because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to share. I'm here to teach. So this one here is a snail horn. I realize that most of you guys may be using high-powered air horns with an external compressor, with a valve. Whatever your setup is, it doesn't really matter about all the technicalities of how cool and how manly your horn is, okay? A horn is a horn. This one here is going to require about 11 amps to, to operate efficiently, figuring that if you're going to sit there and lay on the horn like some of these lunatics do out here on the street. So here's how you do it. From your vehicle, you're going to have a horn wire output underneath your steering column. When you push in your horn button on your steering column, it's basically conducting a ground circuit, which is going through a, a small thin gauge wire, which is typically something like, I mean, this here is actually an 18 gauge. This is actually heavy duty compared to what you would find in a factory horn output wire, just so you get a visual. This is how much wire is in there. So you can't really connect that when a, a horn like this is requiring something that's going to be typically, this is a 12 gauge. This is about the minimum that I would suggest ever doing. This here is a 12 gauge. 10 gauge is even that much better. But for the sake of usability, for my demonstration, I don't want to use a relay that's that serious. And if you are going to try to use something that has that much output, I would not suggest using a pre-wired relay. I would actually suggest use one of these hardwired type installations and go hardwired onto the context of the relay and let this throw the output to your horns. Don't use these pre-wired kits, even though they're nice and they're a convenience, let it be just for that. For high current applications, only use the right wiring for high current applications. Enough said about that. Now when you're going to wire your relays for your air horns, very simple, you're going to have your negative from your horn wire on your vehicle going to one side of the coil. We're going to put it here. On the other opposing side of the relay, you want to have the opposing voltage. So you're going to have positive constant 12 volts here, and you're also going to have constant 12 volts here. Now it's very important that you have a heavy gauge powered fuse input on 87. So what happens is when you click the coil, it's going to convert the, the negative low current input, and it's going to create this high current positive fuse to throw an output on 30. So you're putting a negative low signal here and it's going to cause these pins to, to connect and close and put a fuse heavy gauge output to your air horns which is going to give you a nice strong supply of current. So what we're going to do here is we need 12 volts here and here. This one here has to be a heavy gauge because that's, that's going to be what's going to connect to here. So what I'm going to do I'm going to just simply take a small thin piece of wire because that's all required. Twist those guys up like that. I'm going to join them in this connector. So my heavy gauge lead is connecting to my 87 on my relay. I just need about this much to jump over onto the other side of the coil of the relay. This here is going to be my input from the vehicle's negative output horn wire lead. And 
Now this, number 30 on my relay is going to be my output, which is going to supply the current to my horns. So real quick, fuse 12 volts constant, heavy gauge on pin 87 on your relay, 86 is just the thin wire jumping over from here, both fused back here. This is the horn wire coming from your steering column in your truck or your vehicle. This here is your output number 30 on the relay. This is going to go here. So, ready? This here is my trigger input. Since this share is ground from my power supply, I'm just going to tap it over here on the black lead, you see. But before I make noise, I want to show you something. I want you to actually see physically what's going on in this relay. When you click this to ground, so this is going to be your output from your horn in your vehicle. You hear that? That sound you're hearing is just the coil that's connecting from pins 87 to 30. So this relay is normally open. It, cr it creates and conducts no current. It draws nothing while it's in its rest mode. However, when it's engaged by the coil from the horn switch, it's going to throw a high current output to your horn. So here's how it's going to work when it's all wired up. Here's your horn button. And there you have it. Now this wire here is totally independent of what's going on on the input side. It's solely reliant upon the output that's on pin 87. So the fuse heavy gauge current wire input lead to the relay here, the supply side, is going right from here. So you're connecting a low current to a high current utilizing the relay. That's all that's going on here. So if you have huge horn setup, multiple horn setups, you could use this one relay and connect as many as you want typically because this relay will draw 30 amps and I can't imagine any horn kit that I've ever seen drawing more than that. And no one can lay on a horn, but if you lay on a horn like you do on a traditional car and you lay on it, you could do that. It'll eventually start to sound a little weird, whatever. But a horn kit like this, the air compressor would literally drain the tank by the time you run out of energy forcing your hand on the horn button for that length of time. And by that point, you're kind of like a lunatic anyway. You probably shouldn't be allowed to have air horns. But that's pretty much how this whole system works. It's no more complicated than that. That's all you need is one single pole single throw relay. If you are using the single pole double throw relay with the five pins, you're just going to omit the center 87A pin connector entirely. You have no need for it. That's all there is to it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, if you need to get a color and location cheat wire um, code for your vehicle so you can locate it without going too crazy, shoot me an email and I'll be happy to supply the information to you at no charge. Um, I, I love to help and I hope that this video was helpful.